Hey foodies, thanks for watching. It's taken me about three years to get this one recipe out and it's mostly because I've just come up too late for putting it out. And today we're gonna make pumpkin pie. And to start, we're gonna cut this in half. Then you want to scrape out all the insides. And you don't have to be too thorough. You just want to make sure you get most of the guts out. But for now, we just want to place these face down and pop them into the oven at 425 until they're hot and soft in the middle. So you can take a fork and just squish it right through. It's going to take about 45 minutes for it to bake. So I've just pulled these out of the oven. Um, they're, they're nice and soft. I mean, you can see that they've collapsed quite a bit and there's quite a bit of water that's come out of them. They smell like pumpkin. They smell really good. Um, so the kind of pumpkin I use, I use what's called a pie pumpkin. They're small. They're a lot sweeter. They're easy to work with. The skin is a lot thinner, so you want to go for something more like a pie pumpkin. And yeah, so what we're going to do is I'm going to scrape this, the innards out. And some of it will just come right out. But I'm just going to scrape it right into the bowl. You don't want the skin to go in. There we go. So, And you can see just how easy it peels. Go, and I'll do this piece. With one pie pumpkin this size, which is, I'm going to say it's 20 centimeters or about 8 inches, um, this is going to give us quite a few pumpkin pies. So you could easily freeze the, the filling and make pumpkin pie for Christmas and because it's you don't really need a lot. It's, it's two cups for the whole recipe to make a pie. That looks pretty good. I'll take that one top part off. Just set that aside. I'm just going to break it up. There we go. So that looks nice and pretty smooth. So I'm going to set that aside just to let it cool down a little bit. And we're going to get going on the pastry. So you want to start by adding your really cold butter and three quarters of a cup of white sugar. And your two eggs. And we're going to beat these up. There we go. Okay, so to that, I want to add two cups of all-purpose flour. I'm using Frankie's gluten-free all-purpose flour because it's so good. You can work with pretty much any recipe out there and it works cup for cup and the results are magnificent. So there's one. Two cups. Okay, so I'm looking at this pastry and it's a pretty warm day today, or at least it is here. And um, I'm gonna say this, this needs to set up in the fridge a little bit. So I'm going to, which isn't uncommon at all. So, my butter probably wasn't quite cold enough, so I'm just going to pull this out and then wrap it all up in some plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for a half hour. And while it's setting up, we can make up the, uh, the, the pie, pie filling. So I'm just going to scrape out the whole thing. Oh yeah, you can see how sticky it is. It, it should have formed into a bit of a ball. The nice thing with gluten-free is 
you can beat this and beat this and beat this and it's not going to get tough. Whereas with a traditional wheat based pastry dough, it, you don't want to mix it that much because it will get really tough and then your pastry won't be flaky and light. Whereas with gluten free flour, you don't have that issue. It's really, really quite nice. So I'm just going to mix in the last of the dry ingredients. Grab my piece of plastic wrap. There, and I'm just going to wrap it and pop it in the fridge. Half hour is all it's going to need. So for the filling, oh, we want to take two cups of the pumpkin pie, or we want to take two cups of the pumpkin filling. And I like going a little generous on that. Set that aside. And I want to add in my white sugar and my brown sugar, a pinch of salt, my ground ginger, my ground cinnamon, and I've got a few extra spices here. We've got cardamom pods, so I'm going to just Break the pods up and then take the, uh, the seed from inside out and I'm going to grind that up. Oh, this adds a really, really floral scent and it's really nice. That one's too wet. Okay, so we're going to use this one. And when it comes to cardamom, a little goes a long way, especially when it comes to pumpkin pie. And I need a little bit of clove. I'm going to use probably that many pieces. And I'm going to grind that up. Now you can also buy this pre-ground at like a bulk food store, but having it fresh ground is going to make it smell and taste really, really good. So one nice thing about using a mortar and pestle is you can take all that anger out and put it into the pie. And it just adds a whole bunch of love that that you didn't know was there into it. Mm. Now if you don't have cardamom pods or or clove or nutmeg or anything like that, that's okay. You can you can really leave it out. It's the cinnamon and the ginger that's gonna really make the pumpkin pie a pumpkin pie adding a little bit of extra things like the nutmeg or or cinnamon, uh, sorry, or clove or cardamom just takes the pie to a whole new level. Okay. And then we want to add in two eggs. One. Two and then an egg yolk. And I'm not yoking about this because it's one of those things that you just have to add. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna add my cream. And I'm going to add just a little, little tiny bit of Frankie's all-purpose flour just to Help it thicken just a little tiny bit while it's baking. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this up. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer like this, that's okay. You can use, you can use a whisk in a bowl and that's fine. You can use a stand mixer, you can use a hand mixer. You can just use a fork if you want and just whisk it up. But I'm using a stand mixer because I can actually turn it on, walk away for a minute, get some other things done. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it started to mix. I'm gonna add about a quarter of, of a lemon zest. Oh, and that's gonna bring out the brightness in the pie. There we go, and that goes in there. And I'm gonna get my scraper. There it is. 
and just scrape some of the stuff down. Go. Scrape it out and you can see it's all really nicely combined. The uh, sugar has been dissolved, the eggs have been blended in there. That's really nice. So I'll just scrape down the sides one more time. And you can see just how sloppy it is. I mean you can you could really easily whisk this by hand. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and we're going to get back onto the pastry. Oh, see, there we go. It's been a good half hour. It's set up really nicely. Look at, look, it's, it's firm. That's exactly what I want to see. Okay, so I'm going to cut this in half. Oh, I actually could have used that. There we go. Okay, so let's take a little bit of our flour and dust the counter and I find dusting this oh oh this is gonna be nice pastry so I've also done pastry on camera in a previous episode um, you can use that version that's fine this is exactly the same um, I've also done a savory pie shell and you can do that without the sugar so if you're concerned about how much sugar goes into your pie you can do the savory shell. This one's the sweet, just it sets up a little bit more, has a little bit more body for the, the pumpkin pie, and that's why I like it. And if you keep the flour just underneath the whole time, your pastry isn't gonna stick at all. Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful this is. You're going to be like a pastry god to your family. They're going to be like, oh! Okay. So, and I set that down. Roll it up ever so gently. Look at that. Oh, it's like I've done it before. Okay. Go and I take my knife. And a little bit here and a little bit there. Oh, that looks beautiful. And I can save some of this for, I don't know, maybe pumpkin pie turnovers or something like that. That might be kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to flute the edge just to give it a nice little. And all I'm doing is I'm picking up one side and holding down the other side. And it's just meant to be really easy. And you'll figure out what kind of a flute you like to do. Some people just pull up a little edge. Some people might just take the fork around the edge. This is the one that I like to do the best because it's quick, it's easy, and it looks super fancy. Okay, so now we take our filling. Oh, and look at that filling, and I'm going to put that in there. Look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. And I'm going to go just a bit more. There we go. So I've got a little bit extra. I'll probably make a small pie to go with it. Okay, so I'm going to put this. On here. This is going to go in my oven at 425 for 15 minutes and then about 45 to 50 minutes at 350. So after the 15 minutes, you don't even open the door. You just turn it down to 350 and you let it bake for the rest of the time. So we're going to see what it looks like when it comes out in just a moment. Look at this pie. It looks beautiful I mean it just captures the light just really nicely um, it's it's still a little warm on the underside it it smells delightful I mean you can smell the, the the spices that I put in and I can't wait to dig into it um, yeah I just I'm excited so I'm gonna oh look at that and let's go 
slice. And slice. Oh, look at that. It's got beautiful structure and body. Oh my goodness, considering it's the first slice that came out, it came out really, really nicely. You can see the crust on the other side. It's beautifully cooked. Mm, and the inside just looks really, really nice. I'm quite happy with that. So, the moment of truth. Oh, wow. It's got, you can really get the floral tones of the cardamom. It's really nice. It's not overpowering with the cardamom. It's just really, really pleasant. It's, it's smooth and, oh, you're gonna love this. I look forward to reading all of your comments below. Let me know if you've made the pumpkin pie and do you have a favorite herb or spice that you put into your pumpkin pie that maybe I didn't put in mine? Take care.